We are I. I had a great conversation with a friend of mine yesterday who I haven't seen since I did the uh, the PEI run or lack thereof or the PEI experience. And I was explaining to her the story and we were walking through it, you know, kind of step by step. And, you know, I explained, you know, as many of the details as I could. I skipped over a lot of stuff because I realized that like every other time, I'm just not connected with the story anymore like I can tell the story in great detail and all the twists and turns with a lot of enthusiasm but at the beginning where like right when it first happens but I don't know if after through the course of time I just start to care a little bit less or I've told the story enough that I'm just not connected with it in the same way at the beginning or the emotion has changed but you know like this is a narrative that's not just to do with physical events. This is a narrative that happens through the course of my life. Like once something happens very quickly, like I move on to the next thing. Like I just like, I don't stay connected with these events or these stories or these, you know, like these moments in my life. Like I know that they've happened, but they've been put up on the shelf of, you know, or I guess maybe, maybe the best way to be able to describe it would be is that it's no longer a book. It's a painting. And in my mind, in my heart, in my soul, when you walk down the hallway of such, you can see the paintings and there's a description plate at the bottom, but there's no book that goes along with it. Like that's how, how I truly and authentically feel because I knew when I was telling her the story, I skipped over a lot of it, even though that I wanted to explain it to her, but I just, I skipped over a lot because I don't want to, it felt like like boasting or bragging and like I that's that's not why I did it It, you know it almost seemed foolish to explain but I explained enough you know probably about 80 percent of it so she authentically could get the point and the one thing I said to her at the end is something that I've said to people before but not in context to this because this is the most valuable lesson to me about explaining what happened and the story that goes along with it Is that, said to her, I'm like, one of the life lessons that I've learned is I can't not be that person. You know, I can't not, I cannot live my life in a happy, meaningful way and stifle that person at all. Like, I love going full tilt. I love trying challenging things. I love leaning all in. Because I said to her, I'm like, this is the same person, the same person who thinks that that's a good idea, the same person who starts you know, a a 273-kilometer run after not sleeping for two days, after not eating for a couple days, after traveling for five days straight. Like, you know, the same person who starts that is the same person that starts this pumpkin patch to try to be able to feed, you know, 350 kids for a year. It's the same person who goes, you know, back to school when they're 38 to be able to, you know, start their life in a new trajectory, a new career. It's that same person. It's that same person who's willing to do all the absurd things that life just demands that you do and then not bog and weigh you down. So I said to her, I'm like, I've always told people that if I die in the backcountry, I'm a happy person. You know, usually because I'm trying to do something that just fulfills and feeds my soul. You know, and this is going to be exactly the same thing. I said, I I took this so far. One thing I recognized and I realized is that I have the mental and the physical strength to actually push myself until I die. That's what I realized on this trial this time. But instead of running away from that, instead of changing anything, I told her, I'm like, I recognize that I want to lean into that. I don't want to lose that. Like that is who I am and what makes me. So if at 50, when I break off another one of these, you know, big events, whether I succeed at doing it or not. But the journey along the way, if it takes me to that place of certain death, I'm okay with that. I am absolutely okay with that. Like I I don't look at it as being a bad thing because I'm doing something I authentically love. I'm doing something that makes me feel 
full and real as a person. Makes me feel like my life is worth living for the decade now that then I would have lived it going from 40 to 50. It's not morbid. It's not that I want to die. It's not that, you know, I have a death wish. It's none of that. You know, because I'm not climbing up the side of skyscrapers or hanging off the ends of cranes like some of these crazy fuckers are doing. I'm not doing any of that, nor do I have any want or will to be able to do it. But I realize that when it comes down to my life, the things that I control in my life, I am in such peace. I'm in authentically so much peace that if I die doing one of these things, like it's okay. It's okay. Because the alternative to that is that I don't and I rot my soul away for the decade in between 40 and 50. And that is sure as the fuck not okay. I would rather die. Had living that slow, soul rotting death is to me the same thing as being, you know, plugged into multiple different machines and, you know, IV drips to be able to keep me alive in a hospital bed, something I like desperately do not want to happen. It's the same thing. I would rather just go out with a bang, the heart attack in your sleep and live peacefully forever than after. So the one thing that she says to me, which felt very comforting, it's like a hug for your heart, a hug for your soul. She said to me, she's like, I I could never imagine you being any other person. I would never want to hear anything else from you. This is who you are. Like This is who you are as a person. She's like, this is what makes me love and value and respect you so much. And I looked at her, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, see, this is why you're in my life. And I said to her, I'm like, this is the reason why that, you know, I love you and value you being in my life too. You're like, you're one of my best friends. I've known you for years, years and years. And this is exactly the reason why that that person is in my life. Because I want people, I've collected people who are going to do the same thing. They will take things that far because they realize it's not taking things far. It's not taking things too far. It's not being absurd. It's that because it fills your heart and it feeds your soul. It's because who you are, the DNA, the fabric of your being, like this is who you are. And it's amazing. You can't live without it. So I've collected all these people in my life that I I honestly don't know if I could live without it anymore because it makes me believe and understand that this side of life is real. There's more people who are doing this than just me. And if they don't do the same thing, their heart and their soul are rotting away too. And that's what makes me love them so much. Male or female, whether I've known them for a year or 20 years, doesn't matter. This is what makes me believe in them Because I can then believe in myself in a level of comfort that I can't get from people who just don't understand. Who just don't quite get it. So, it was nice. It was refreshing. It was very refreshing to be able to get into this conversation so that I can look back at her through another 10 years that we're going to be friends. And I can leverage this moment of being like, this is exactly the reason why we are friends. This is exactly the reason why we will always be in each other's lives because of the fact that we are one in the same. Like our souls are one in the same. And that's what, that's what makes me happy. And that's, those are the moments when I can leverage doing these big events, these big self-driven events. That if something ever did go completely awry and I had perished, I could look back at that I've accumulated through my life happiness, true, authentic happiness because of people like that. So my question for all of you is, when you look back at your life, when you look back at the people who are in your life, is there a refreshing component to them? Is there a refreshing aspect that they bring to your soul? Do they cleanse your heart? Do they cleanse your soul? Do they allow you to be able to be an even better version of you than what you ever could be on your own 
because of who they are. And you feed off that. You want that just a little bit more.